Great. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Public Utilities for the City of Santa Rosa to order. If we could have a roll call, please. Chairman Galvin. Present. Vice Chair Cowan. Here. Board Member Arnone. Board Member Dowd. Here. Board Member Holt. Here. Board Member Stephenson. Board Member Tibbetts. Good afternoon. For the record, uh, Board Member Tibbetts has been in Sacramento in a hearing and is hoping to get back in time for at least part of the meeting. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, statements of abstention by Board Members. I will be abstaining from the approval of the minutes for May 21st and June 4th. We've actually deferred the approval of the minutes. All of them? Okay. Then we won't worry about that. All right. We'll move then to our study session. Thank you. Our study session today is a presentation on the producer distributor recycle water agreement with Roner Park. And to give the presentation is Deputy Director of Subregional Operations, Mike Prince. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Um, I think I'm further away from you in this sitting than I would be in the council chambers, which is a little awkward, but. Um, Today I'm going to be speaking to you about a proposed recycled water supply agreement between Roanoke Park and Santa Rosa. Um, right off the bat, I want to acknowledge some people who have contributed significantly to us getting to the point where I'm in front of you today discussing this. Um, Jennifer Burke and Mary Grace Pawson have played significant roles in the negotiation of the agreement up to this point. And then also Suzanne Rawlings has provided a lot of advice to city staff as well through this process. And uh, it's a big relief to me to have all three of them here because I'm quite confident with them here we'll be able to answer any difficult questions that you may have about this. Um, I have been working on this lately, but Jennifer Burke actually was working on this back even in 2013, which is something that uh, I'll bring up later in the agreement. Give you a quick overview of my presentation today. Um, first off, I want to talk a little bit about the subregional recycled water system, um, the purpose behind it as of today, and some statistics that will be relevant for the presentation. Uh, I want to talk about the Runner Park uh, component of that recycled water system, uh, the Santa Rosa component of that recycled water system as well, um, some producer distributor concepts that uh, come into play in the agreement as proposed. Um, I want to embed at this point in the presentation a sort of sub-agenda about the rationale and how and some what-ifs, um, which may answer some uh, questions that you may have. I'll wrap up with a brief discussion of the schedule with some recent developments and some expected developments after this meeting, and then there will be an opportunity for uh, any discussion or questions that you may want to entertain. Um, Jumping right into the sub-regional system, I, I think it's not a, a foreign system to anyone here, but I do want to uh, get a few facts out in the open. I, I think we're all aware of the sub-regional partners that are served by it, Santa Rosa, Cotati, Runner Park, Sebastopol, parts of uh, unincorporated parts of uh, the county. Um, historically, the system did have some capacity problems in the 80s, which triggered a number of improvements. Um, one significant one uh, that you're all aware of is the Geysers Pipeline uh, and an extensive evolution of the recycled water distribution system. Um, at that time, disposal was the name of the game, and that was a routine thing that we did um, via discharge. Uh, things have evolved significantly since that time, and now we are in a 100% reuse mode. One third of the water that's produced at the plant is used for irrigation purposes, agricultural and urban irrigation uh, purposes. We actually irrigate uh, in the order, on the order of 6,200 acres of uh, pasture, vineyards, golf courses, and landscaping uh, in Roanoke Park, Santa Rosa, and areas around the plant and in, in the, around the Laguna de Santa Rosa. The other two-thirds of the water, on average, is delivered to the Calpine steam fields uh, at the other end of the geysers pipeline. Um, because of those demands, there is typically no discharge from the system uh, in a normal year. And uh, ultimately, based on the 70-year data set that was used during conceptual design of the geysers pipeline, um, when you look at those preci precipitation amounts for the past 70 years, I think it actually is more than 70 at this point. Um, it boils down to about a 2% chance of weather 
wet weather induced needs for discharge. So I think it's a fair statement to say that recycled water is arguably a commodity 98% of the time. Um, continuing on, this is a, a graphic that I had developed not that long ago that I think is uh, valuable for a number of reasons, not the least of which is it does show the spatial relationship of uh, the subregional partners, uh, the extent of the geysers pipeline all the way up to the terminal reservoir at the top of the graphic. And just as a footnote, there are uh, land application sites for biosolids down uh, in the southern end of the county as well. So it's an overall graphic. Um, Windsor is shown, they're not technically a sub-regional partner, but they are a customer in a sense because they are tied into the geysers pipeline as well. And so that's why they're uh, shown on this graphic also. As I think most of you know, the sub-regional system includes a number of disposal slash reuse avenues. Uh, the most significant of which in terms of volume is geysers, uh, the geysers project. Um, ag reuse and urban reuse and in wet conditions uh, we potentially have to discharge. Um, today's presentation really is focused on the urban reuse component only and specifically within that arena, Rohnert Park's reuse of the recycled water that we generate. To put things into more of a visual context, um, this is what we forecast to be the distribution of recycled water um, for this season. It may be a slide I've shown in a recycled water update not that long ago, um, but it's relevant to bring up and refresh your memories with today because it's, it's important to take note of the relative portions of, of all of the use, um, particularly focusing on the approximate 400 million gallon usage in Rohnert Park relative to the agricultural reuse and the geysers reuse. Again, the, as I mentioned in a previous meeting, the unnamed triangular wedge at the top is uh, essentially a drought reduction. That Normally that allotment of water would have gone to the geysers, but through coordination with Calpine, uh, who understand very clearly the constraints that we're under in this drought, uh, they've been willing to work with us and, and accept a reduced amount of water in light of the drought. Um, so I think it's worth showing there as well. Switching over to just the irrigation side of the, the prior slide, this is the relative distribution of irrigated acres. Again, on the order of 6,200 acres, uh, the vast majority being pasture and fodder acreage. Um, again, it's worth noting the urban components, Santa Rosa Urban and Rohnert Park Urban. Uh, vineyard is shown, although the irrigation application rates for vineyard are significantly lower than, than pasture. So again, this is acreage. This is not volume. Uh, something that I wanted to make sure is clear. And then there is another triangular wedge up at the top. Uh, it doesn't have a leader to it, but it's 217 acres of other irrigated land. And that includes things like some small vegetable crops that are grown with uh, our recycled water. Shifting gears, I'd like to talk about the existing system as it stands in Rohnert Park right now. Um, font's a little small there, but I want to point out that it there is a pipe network, a purple pipe network, so to speak, uh, that exists within Rohnert Park, and it is a sub-regional system. It is a sub-regional pipe network. Uh, the first parts of it were installed in 1989. There's a low pressure zone and a higher pressure zone. The low pressure zone was installed in 1989, and it was part of the disposal system at that time. And it was a very necessary part of the disposal system, as was the, the subsequent uh, larger portion, which was installed, I think, in 1995, higher pressure, more extensive. I have a graphic which will show both of those. Um, effectively, as of today, after the geysers having gone online, and essentially, to put it kind of um, qualitatively, all our water being spoken for, it's now really a recycled water supply. Um, recycled water irrigation in the urban environment reduces potable water demand that would otherwise be required to provide irrigation. So the recycled water supplied for irrigation is effectively a potable water offset. The 1995 agreement uh, that was established between the regional and Rohnert Park uh, term um, was originally set to uh, end in March of this year. There was a subsequent extension through July of this year. And as I mentioned earlier, Jennifer Burke has spent a lot of time working on this actually since 2013. So this is uh, 
not a new thing for her by any means. And these, these discussions have been going on for quite a while. There have been a, a couple of periods of time where the discussions went idle for various reasons, but it has been going on for quite some time, knowing that the original agreement was set to expire in March of this year. Um, the sub-regional division is a recycled water retailer, and that is to say we're a producer and distributor of, of water. And as you'll see, there are some uh, shifts that have occurred uh, in Santa Rosa that changed the role of the sub-regional system in the overall picture, and I'll go over that. But as the retailer, the producer and distributor, um, sub-regional owns, operates, and maintains the distribution system in Roner Park. Uh, we handle all the customer use processing, meter reading, and, and billing primarily, and we're responsible for site inspection and regulatory compliance in conjunction with working uh, with site supervisors for specific irrigation sites. Uh, this is a picture that shows the extent of the recycled water system in Rohnert Park. The dark, uh, bold boundary are the Rohnert Park city limits, and the purple lines are essentially pipelines. Um, the purple circles are use concentration areas to give you a sense of where uh, the use occurs. The, uh, there's a leg which I don't know if I can very easily point to that <laughs> it comes off a little bit higher than my hand right here and goes off to the northeast and then heads east into Roner Park. That is the original low pressure um, trunk essentially and it serves uh, the northern port part of Roner Park. The other leg that goes off and, and essentially fills in through uh, lateral mains, the rest of Runner Park is the higher pressure system that was installed in the mid-90s. And you can see um, the Lacuna treatment plant storage ponds off Meadow Lane uh, in the upper left of that diagram as well. It's important at this point to talk a little bit about the recycled water system that exists within Santa Rosa's uh, city limits as well. Um, in 2007, the BPU adopted Phase 1 West of the Santa Rosa Urban Reuse System, and there are, are a number of uh, zones associated with urban reuse expansion in Santa Rosa, and the first one uh, was Phase 1 West was adopted in 2007, and in doing that, we developed a wholesale retail relationship between sub-regional and the local water division within Santa Rosa. So the result of that is sub-regional became a wholesaler and local water is the retailer or distributor. At the time, and based on where we are today, we consider that a model for future recycled water urban expansion, supply expansion. Um, this is a graphic that shows the overall project area and then the phase one west that was the subject of the adoption in 2007. Again, Santa Rosa city limits are shown in the, the bold black line and the lighter blue phase one west is uh, what was adopted in 2007. So a little more detail about the two roles, sub-regional being the wholesaler or producer. And it, it's important to clarify that wholesale, wholesaler and producer are essentially synonymous terms in this presentation. And there's a shift in the, the semantics in this presentation where I really start referring to a wholesaler as a producer and um, a distributor as a retail sales uh, entity. Um, sub-regional produces and sells the water to local water. Um, Sub-regional owns and operates and maintains the transmission system, including storage ponds and pump stations, up to the city limits, essentially. Um, and we ensure regulatory compliance in that portion of the system. Whereas local water picks things up and becomes the retailer and distributor, um, they own and operate and maintain the distribution system. Uh, they read meters and bill customers, and they conduct inspections and ensure regula regulatory compliance in that arena. So there's a transmission arena and a distribution arena, and that's how the roles are distinguished. So producer-distributor concepts that apply to this agreement, uh, this slide is very similar to the last slide. Sub-regional would be the wholesale producer with Rohnert Park, just the way it is as a uh, wholesale producer for Santa Rosa. Um, 
the same ownership, operation, and maintenance trend would continue. Transmission systems, storage ponds, and pump stations, regulatory compliance obligations would be fulfilled in that portion of the, the overall system. Roanoke Park would pick things up and be the retail distributor and would sell recycled water to the end users ultimately. So Roanoke Park would pay a wholesale rate for recycled water. They could then charge their customers a retail rate as a retailer of recycled water. Roanoke Park would own, operate, and maintain the distribution system within Roanoke Park's city limits. Um, Roanoke Park would read meters and bill customers and do the inspections and ensure regulatory compliance in that arena as well. There's, there's some more discussion about regulations, which I'll have shortly, but um, ultimately that is the same model that has been defined between sub-regional and local water, and it's what's proposed to be implemented with respect to Roanoke Park at this point. This is a good point in the presentation to really talk about the purpose behind this, how we're going to achieve this with your support, and uh, go over some scenarios where uh, you may have some questions I'd like to answer potential questions right off the bat. It's important, these are some points that I'm going to go into greater detail shortly, but I want to touch on the fact that this is driven by supply, not disposal. Um, I think it's important to discuss the system value versus uh, operation and maintenance responsibility. Um, there's some details about customers that are relevant to discuss. Uh, overall infrastructure transfer, which will be a reiteration to some degree of a prior slide where I showed the overall aerial view of Roanoke Park and the pipe network. I will go into some detail about regulations and some potential future potential future wheeling of recycled water through the transmission mains in Roanoke Park. This next slide is a pretty important slide and in some ways I think it's central to the presentation. I think it's important to keep in mind the past, essentially the pre-geysers arena that used to exist and that no longer exists since the geysers went online in 2003 I think it was. Um, ultimately pre-geysers versus post-geysers and I think it's very important to keep in mind the idea of a residual, sort of something that comes out of the wastewater treatment process versus a resource. Recycled water today is a resource, particularly in our situation where all of our water is spoken for. Um, looking at it from a residual standpoint is a little off target in today's arena, um, particularly in our local area where all of our recycled water is spoken for. Um, again, the concept of disposal versus supply is important to keep in mind. Um, ultimately, when the system in Roanoke Park was used for disposal purposes, um, it was priceless. As of now, operating a, a supply system that was originally intended for disposal is really a subsidy of water supply in Roanoke Park for reasons that I, I touched on earlier, where recycled water is essentially a potable water supply offset. Without recycled water, irrigation would be achieved by using potable water. So recycled water plays a role in Roanoke Park's water supply portfolio. And I, I think that, that's, that's an important and in some ways very critical part of this presentation. Um, it's not really appropriate any longer for it to be a sub-regional expense because it is, it is a supply phenomenon. It is not a disposal system at this point. Ultimately, this agreement, by transferring the system over to Roanoke Park, corrects a systematic evolutionary problem. The system started out as a disposal system, and it is not really a disposal system anymore. It is a supply system, uh, supplying recycled water as a commodity and a resource, as opposed to a residual from the wastewater treatment process. Um, back in 2007, the future um, was what it was, but we're in the future essentially now as it was perceived back in 2007. So it's appropriate to use the model that we developed in 2007 as part of the Phase 1 West adoption of the Recycle Water Plan in Santa Rosa. Um, again, as I mentioned, Urban Irrigation and Runner Park had priceless disposal value, but it isn't a disposal system at this point. It's now an urban distribution system, and it's appropriate to be owned, maintained, and operated by Rona Park. And I think Rona Park fully acknowledges that at this point, based on the conversations that we've had with Darren Jenkins, the city manager of Rona Park, and Mary Grace Pawson. I think they, they would agree as well. Um, Urban irrigation O&M is really not justified for sub-regional disposal and wholesale purposes. It's an infrastructure burden 
not justified for disposal needs. Um, the infrastructure value essentially was already realized um, in the past disposal mode that we were in, but because we're not in that mode, and there are some uh, additional information that I'm going to bring up, um, the infrastructure value is already realized. It's a relatively straightforward process in some respects and complex in others when you get into the legal wording of agreements and such, but ultimately this is as simple as an ownership and responsibility transfer that's handled through a legal and administrative process. Um, that does include customer communication. Um, there should not be any interruption to customer service. It's basically um, in the background, essentially, uh, from a customer perspective, recycled water should not be interrupted. It's, it's strictly a, a handoff of responsibility and ownership. Um, there will be and already has been some intermunicipal staff interaction for knowledge transfer and system familiarization, and, and that's ongoing. I think there's actually meetings being coordinated sometime fairly soon. Mike Sherman, who is in the audience, is, is starting to get some of those meetings coordinated between the two entities. Um, customers, I did want to touch more on customers. Um, existing customers are still sub-regional customers through um, the extended term of the agreement. Um, then we have user agreements with those customers. Um, those customers are being informed of the pending transfer. Um, any renewed user agreements include successor language, so they're aware that through the language in the agreement that uh, a transfer is, is likely, and at the time when they were written, was at least possible. Um, new customers will be Ronit Park customers effective the day the agreement is executed, which, by the way, would not be today. This isn't, this isn't going to happen immediately. Today's study session is not requesting action. This is just an informative study session. Uh, Sonoma State will be a Roanoke Park customer, even though Sonoma State is not within Roanoke Park city limits. It's appropriate for Sonoma State to be a Roanoke Park customer because they're essentially on the other side of Roanoke Park, on the east side of Roanoke Park. The sub-regional uh, transmission system is on the west side of Roanoke Park. So it, for a number of reasons, it makes sense for Sonoma State to be a customer of Roanoke Park. They have been informed of that change as well, and we've been coordinating with Roanoke Park under that premise. This is an exact duplicate of the slide I mentioned before, but I figured it would be easier than flipping back. Uh, ultimately, all of the purple infrastructure inside the black, dark black boundary would become Roanoke Park's uh, infrastructure, and they would have ownership, maintenance, uh, ownership and maintenance obligations for that. It would be their system. There would be uh, hand, handoff points or points of delivery to Roanoke Park, essentially, where the purple lines intersect the uh, black boundary. Regulatory compliance is a critical issue that uh, needs to be handled seamlessly, and Subregional will provide training to Roanoke Park. Uh, Mary Grace has a lot of experience with recycled water, and, and so I guarantee you that she would be a resource for her staff, but Subregional staff are uh, capable of and willing and have actually even started uh, training um, on some level Roanoke Park staff. Uh, compliance would still be coordinated through sub-regional. Um, there is an NPDES permit that governs the system. Uh, Roanoke Park and Roanoke Park customers still have to comply with the NPDES permit uh, issued for the sub-regional system. All necessary recycled water regulations, rules, regulations, and the user guide that is published. Um, as I said, the, the existing permit will still apply. There's what if language, or if then language, if you will, in the agreement uh, that addresses a situation that is moving in parallel. There's potential future enrollment in the statewide uh, general order with respect to recycled water. That has not come to fruition. It's a, it's a parallel process. Both Santa Rosa and Roner Park are attempting to enroll in that through notice, issuing notices of intent, or I should say preparing notices of intent. Um, that, that's a separate but parallel process, which has only just begun. If that process reaches fruition, the NPDES permit would not be the governing permit. We would be having a separate statewide general order enrollments, so there would be separate regulation. 
and the agreement does include language to address that. It's essentially if-then language, and if that doesn't occur, the MPDES permit that currently governs the system would continue to. I wanted to talk a little bit about some potential questions and, and what if. Um, what happens if the agreement is terminated for whatever reason? Uh, we have thought a fair amount about that and ultimately the, the way the language has been sorted out and, and approved at the staff level anyway is that the system would be transferable back to Santa Rosa and sub-regional um, upon agreement termination. Um, that is important for wheeling purposes um, particularly because there could be expansion in southern Santa Rosa or possibly even Katati where wheeling through this system into South Santa Rosa or Katati could be critical. So there is language that addresses uh, that potential as well. Um, I have a bullet item here and, and I want to clarify that uh, if Roanoke Park's recycled water man were to go to zero, obviously that, that would uh, be a pretty dramatic change, the probability of that happening is essentially zero also. But I wanted to use that idea as a way to describe additional capacity in the sub-regional system that we have as of today. Um, the current agricultural customer base uh, ultimately can accept quite a bit more water than they currently are accepting. Uh, under the drought conditions that we're experiencing right now, they are allocated ultimately about 12 inches per anchor most of those customers could use up to 20 if not more than 20 inches per acre. So the amount of water that the ag community is using is on the order of half what they could use and quite frankly would probably like to have. Um, so that is additional capacity in, in essence. Um, the geyser system also has additional capacity. Uh, the flow rate through the geyser system fluctuates based on a contractual delivery schedule throughout the year, but the average flow rate throughout the year is 12.6 million gallons a day. The infrastructure um, and essentially the pump stations that deliver water to Calpine has a capacity to move water at a rate of 16.9, 17 million gallons a day um, all year long except for our normal maintenance shutdowns. So my point there is that combined, both of those uh, customer bases include an additional capacity of about 2 billion gallons a year. Um, the Calpine increase, there are tiers within the agreement that we have with Calpine, so there would be contractual negotiations to really get into that additional capacity, but in terms of infrastructure, there's a physical capability that exists today to move water at those higher rates. So there is additional physical capacity in the system as it is today. So I just wanted to put that out there to clarify for the board that we're not talking about really dramatically impacting our, our disposal capacity if we wanted to look at this in terms of disposal instead of supply. I showed this slide earlier also and again this is what we're anticipating delivering in 2015 and it gives you a visual way to, to estimate or, or essentially see what the relative usage is, but keep in mind that with two billion additional gallons of capacity, um, it's significantly more than what would be uh, in the Roanoke Park urban uh, system if we were only looking at it as a dis disposal system. And as again, I've mentioned, this is a supply situation that we're talking about. Figured I'd touch on schedule a little bit. On June 11th, uh, Mary Grace informed me that uh, Roanoke Park Council's Water Issue Subcommittee met and was extremely supportive of moving this agreement forward. Uh, two days ago, uh, the SUBTAC discussion occurred and the SUBTAC had unanimous support and they were given essentially this exact same presentation, uh, same information. They unanimously supported it. Today, obviously, we have the VPU study session. Uh, again, no action is being requested, but it's the uh, best opportunity to start to engage on the topic and, and discuss it and answer questions. Uh, we're proposing to take this to the BPU contract subcommittee for review on June 30th. Um, Roanoke Parks Council final, final consideration is scheduled to be on July 14th, and this will be brought back to the BPU in final form for final approval on July 16th. So with that, I'd be happy to attempt to answer any questions, participate in any discussion that you'd like, and we do have Mary Grace and Jennifer available um, to assist with questions as well. 
Board Member Dowd. Uh, Deputy Director Prince, uh, I'm curious about the Wheeling, it, this I'm addressing page 21 of your PowerPoint presentation and it, it arose in my mind as I went through this earlier. When I look at the system that goes through Roner Park at this point, um, you could get to Katati either by going around on the west side of Katati using some of that existing structure or you'd have to go through the system that is in Roner Park. I suspect some of the same things could be said about Southwest Santa Rosa, how we would get water, recycle water to those regions. What my concern is, is that I would, I would hope that the agreement that is being uh, developed at this point is going to take those possibilities into play so that we don't have to renegotiate a whole new agreement in the event that Katati wants to get into the recycled uh, program as a distributor and further um, Santa Rosa's recycled water program. So um, you haven't really addressed if we're going to have this covered in an agreement that it's a potential and that everyone is aware that it is a potential. Roner Park and the sub-regional system. In terms of wheeling to either the north end of Roner Park or the south end of Roner Park. Ultimately all the agreement does address is whether or not the system would be handed back to sub-regional for wheeling purposes. Well, we, Yeah, wheeling is in there. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize that I didn't make that clear. Wheeling is addressed aside from wheeling needs that would exist if the agreement had been terminated. So yeah, either way, wheeling is addressed under either circumstance. Thank you. Board Member Holt. Uh, is there a uh, current value of the uh, uh, system that's currently owned by Santa Rosa uh, to uh, Roner Park? Uh, and is that in the agreement to transfer of monies in any way no no there there is no price to be paid for the infrastructure in the ground so and, we're essentially giving it to them ultimately because it's no longer needed for disposal purposes and that's why I had the why slide the, the system is not being used for its original purpose ultimately anymore it's a water supply system that, that is meeting a potable water offset for Roner Park, but it, is, it isn't a necessary part of sub-regional's uh, disposal portfolio at this point. So, uh, uh, for the purposes of system valuation, uh, are we writing it off or do we carry it as a book item of value? Turn your mic on, please. Oh, I guess the mic isn't on. That's right. There you go. Uh, yeah, so given that there's some value in the system uh, for system valuation uh, for bookkeeping purposes, are we uh, writing, uh, writing this off or do we carry that as an, a line item of uh, value in the current system valuation? I, I don't believe we would be carrying that forward. It would be infrastructure in Roner Park that we wouldn't be carrying on sub-regional bookings. Okay, so under our current valuation that will just be retired to zero? I think that's the way it would be, yes. Okay. Uh, my next question, uh, I guess, is uh, given the current uh, uh, water drought, uh, do you have any idea at all of the per capita or total 
uh, additional potable water Ronard Park uh, residents would be using if they did not have this recycle system? The, the best way I would estimate that is the amount of water that we're supplying, the amount of recycled water that, that we're supplying, and in 2015 that's 400 million gallons approximately. Okay. So if that recycled water wasn't supplied and people were irrigating the, the same way that they are now at the same application rates, so what, Pres presumably what, what, under the drought that it could be more severe because that would be a direct impact to potable but so what's the population of Roner Park being served about 43,000 people right I understand <laughs> Residential or total use, whatever way. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Ronard Park already is, has the has the ability in, in the drought just because they've been doing that for years. Great. Now what I'm saying is that your water conservation uh, benefits by already having that system throughout your system. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you Vice Chair Count. Thank you for the presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, fine. Um, I appreciate all the statistics you gave. They were really useful in this discussion. Um, I just had a couple of questions um, uh, about uh, some of the things mentioned. Uh, slide 15, I, I agree with everything on the why slide. Um, I, I, my, my only kind of uh, interest is uh, I, I agree that infrastructure value has been realized by the historical past disposal need. Um, Related to that statement, um, it says, and I, I agree that the urban irrigation in Roner Park had a priceless disposal value. So by definition, um, uh, the infrastructure value has been realized um, if the disposal was priceless. Um, but further than that, have there been, has there been any calculations, anything back of the envelope, just, just to, to make everybody feel um, okay that um, the infrastructure value is far less than all of the maintenance costs that will have to um, be required to update the system in perpetuity. I mean, it makes sense that it would be t to me, but I'm just curious as to whether um, any calculations were performed. We haven't done any calculations to that effect because in, in terms of disposal need, when you look at the, the customer base that we've, we've discussed up here in, in Calpine, um, you could shut the system off effectively and save a lot of maintenance obligations right there. Um, but there is a, an existing recycled water demand at the other end of that pipeline. And so from a disposal standpoint, it really doesn't have value. From a supply standpoint, it, it has the value that Mary Grace was just touching on in terms of potable water offset. But so we haven't really done a calculation because it's based on uh, this presentation in the agreement is based on a philosophical uh, value perspective of the system. Uh, I imagine that the system has value to run our park. They will be charging their users uh, money for the water. Um, a, retail, a retail rate above yeah, the wholesale rate. Right, and then they will also have to update, maintain the system. So I imagine that they have done some sort of calculations to the effect that the system would make sense for them to continue running? I, I believe so, and and that's something that Mary Grace may want to maybe want to talk to, but um, I don't think they'd be taking it on if they weren't prepared to. I, I, I understand. I, I'd be interested if any information on that front came available. I'd be interested in, in learning more about that. I, though, I, again, I do agree that this is the right move for Santa Rosa. It makes sense for Santa Rosa. So regional is not in the the water retailing business, and I and I, and I agree that um, this is the right move. But um, I, again, I am I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I also just had a, a couple other questions. Sure. Um, so the pipe boundary map. Um, there is a purple pipe that goes toward the south, I think, and it just kind of enters Runner Park briefly and follows the border of the city, and then it goes out to look probably ag customers. Um, how is that portion of the pipe going to be dealt with? I, I 
believe that it is not a point of delivery. It's okay. Oh, okay. I see it now. I see now it goes along okay, 101. Yeah. Thank you. I, it didn't look like there was delivery anyhow, but okay. Um, and then this, for example, this is this is pretty significant pond on Gallo Vineyard property that's not in Runner Park by any means, but yeah. But supplied by recycled water or subregional, great. Um, and then just a clarification question. If the statewide general order does go through, does that mean that the system will not require an NPDES permit at all? Or the recycled water system would be governed under the statewide general order permit. And not NPDES any longer. Right. And that's is that a new regulation for a recycled water across the state? Yeah, it's a gen it's a, a statewide general order which municipalities can enroll in instead of having a specific NPDES permit. And it sounds like it's more appropriate for recycled water customers as opposed to the NPDES, which is just any discharge. It, 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 we think so, yes. Great. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Any other board questions? Any further comment? Oh, go ahead. to them um, it would encourage them to um, sorry, uh, encourage them to um, use less recycled water because it's not good and it's not healthy to have extra water going all over the place thank you we, we do work with site supervisors and uh, urban reuse sites are on a pretty strict water budget and it is true that that sprinkler spray patterns sometimes do get on the sidewalk and we have crews that go around and monitor that and work with site supervisors to correct problems. Uh, has been with us for about three months, and that position is budgeted to become permanent in our 15-16 fiscal year budget, uh, really uh, justified in large part by the responsibility we would be taking on should this transfer agreement go through. Great. Well, let's hope that Roner Park can do as good a job of policing as Santa Rosa is doing. Any further comments or questions? Thanks for your presentation. We'll look forward to discussing it at the upcoming contract review subcommittee and then having it come back uh, for an action item in July. Thank you. Okay. We have no staff briefings. Uh, can we have uh, one consent item on the Summerfield Road Horseshoe Drive sewer main replacement? Second. 
I would move approval of the consent calendar. Second. We have a motion by board member Dowd, seconded by board member Holt to approve the consent calendar. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4 0. We have a report item uh, termination of the professional services agreement with Bottom Line Utility Solutions. Mr. Vogler, are you handling that one? Yes. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chair Galvin, members of the board. Uh, so the report item before you today is a termination of the professional services agreement with Bottom Line Utility Solutions, Inc. And next. a little background. Uh, <clears throat> Back in uh, July of 2014, the professional services agreement with Bottom Line Utility Solutions, Inc., uh, acronym is BLUES. The PSA with BLUES was approved uh, by BPU on July 24th last year, and it was subsequently amended in January of 2015. The amendment was to update uh, the scope of work. Uh, the, pro the overall project intent uh, was designed as a pilot program to install 500 ultra-high uh, efficiency packages, which uh, consists of toilets, shower heads, and aerators, and these uh, packages would be installed in City of Santa Rosa water customer residential homes. Uh, the program, at the time that the customers were signing up for the program, allowed them to either pay for the entire package in full or they could opt for a monthly payment plan through their water bill. So subsequent to that, uh, late in 2014, the Department of Water Resources uh, issued a grant energy solicitation for uh, municipalities to su uh, submit projects that would, uh, boy, that light is just getting me, would allow, uh, would allow uh, potential funding opportunities uh, for projects that would save water and energy. And so, uh, uh, water department staff got together and kind of had a furious round of getting uh, the grant proposal put together. They got the proposal submitted. Uh, on February 10th of 2015, the council adopted resolution 28602, authorizing the submittal of the water energy grant to DWR. Uh, after that, on March 31st, we received notification from DWR that the city was awarded approximately $2.5 million uh, to install water energy efficient fixtures in the city. So it was great news. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to this. The grant program will provide for installation of roughly 4,400 fixture packages in our uh, residential customers' homes. And it also has approximately uh, 250 pre rent spray nozzles for facilities that are restaurants or food production facilities. So given that uh, <clears throat> we had a program that was allowing customers to participate and fully finance their own installation of uh, water efficient packages, uh, and now that we're going to have very soon an opportunity to provide these same packages for customers free of charge, there was a bit of a disconnect. And, uh, and so we had some conversation and it seemed appropriate that we discontinue the pilot program with Blues uh, because we'll be able to provide the same services and fixtures uh, a little bit later on this year at no charge to our customers. So on the 21st of May, staff contacted Blues to advise them that we would be recommending to the board that we terminate the PSA. So the recommendation before you right now uh, by motion that the board approve the termination of the professional services agreement with Bottom Line Utilities Solutions, Inc. And uh, happy to take any questions or comments. Any board member questions or comments? Board member Holt? Yes, uh, from your comments, why uh, I understand Bottom Line has already uh, provided uh, services to some customers and uh, so are there going to be how are we going to work out the reimbursement to those customers so uh the way that the program works is anybody that is signed up for the program and has received the uh, fixture packages 
installed at their house, uh, they are responsible for paying for those items. And so at the time of the installation, uh, the plumber uh, had a certification form that was developed uh, with the Plumber Bean Blues, was developed in conjunction with the city, and the customer opts at that time whether or not they want to pay for the entire package or if they want to up, up front or if they want to pay in monthly installments. And so what happens is the customer either way remits payment to the city. As the city receives payment for those items from the customers, the city then turns around and forwards uh, that money to Blues to compensate them for the work that is done. So currently uh, we've had a total of 19 customers that have participated in the program. Uh, we had uh, 12 customers that opted to pay for the program up front and we had uh, the balance of the customers that opted to pay through the monthly installments. So the monthly installments were over a period of 60 months and it's a, a, a bill or a charge that's added to the bill each month. So is there interest on those payments? There's no interest. Uh, there's a slight uh, uh, difference between if you pay up front versus the monthly charge. It's a very small amount of money. It's not an interest charge. Uh, the idea at the time uh, that was considered by BPU is they wanted to make the monthly payment a rounded off number. So for example, if you selected one fixture package in your home, you would pay $7 per month. If you selected the two fixture package, you would pay $12 per month. Doing the actual math, it would have been $6 and change and uh, $11 and change. And the idea was to round it up to the next whole dollar so it was easy to understand for the customers. And also would, uh, in a very small way, would partially offset uh, the amount of uh, energy and time spent by city staff in managing the monthly payment system. So it'd be like a billing fee? Uh, yes, yeah, essentially. It, it does, not, uh, uh, does not cover the city for its uh, incurred expenses by any means, but it, it's a small piece. Okay, so um, moving along then, uh, once the grant uh, comes through, uh, will the city staff do this work or will it be contracted out? Well, what we're going to do, uh, we would uh, issue an RFP to allow uh, plumbing companies to compete for the work, and uh, so we're going to open it up. Uh, it's possible that uh, Blues uh, might want to compete for that work. In fact, when I talked to them over the phone, they indicated that they were interested in having uh, you know, a future relationship with the city when the grant money became available. So I would expect they might uh, you know, go after that work as well. Right, so uh, amending the current agreement is not in the works then? Um, excuse me? Amending the current agreement to have them continue to do the work under the new grant, that's not in the works? No, it's not. Uh, the uh, existing agreement, uh, and I'm sure uh, you know Suzanne could probably talk a bit more about this, but it was very specific regarding the how the program was constructed and that it was just for this pilot program for 500 fixtures. When the city gets the grant money, that's uh, it's a completely different thing and it has different requirements that uh, are associated with the state providing the money that we'll need to meet and one of those uh, I'm sure will be to provide an equal playing field for interested uh, plumbers uh, to be able to solicit for that work. Thank you. I take it the 19 people that opted into the pilot program are not eligible for the, any rebates through their reimbursement through the, uh, the grant that we're going to receive? Uh, it's something that we've discussed. Uh, we don't have an immediate answer for that. Uh, we uh, feel that once the grant money becomes available and we see exactly what the stipulations are surrounding the use of the grant money, uh, we're going to be in a better position to understand what, if anything, we may be able to do to compensate the customers that have already participated. Any other questions? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I move to um, pass the termination of professional services agreement with Bottom Line Utilities Incorporated. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Cowan, seconded by Board Member Holt. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. 
public comments. I don't see any members of the public still here. We have no referrals, any written communication. Hearing none, any subcommittee reports? Uh, the contract committee will be meeting on uh, June 30th, as uh, was uh, mentioned earlier by Mike. Board Member Dow? The uh, budget review uh, subcommittee will also they have a scheduled meeting and with two additionals if necessary and so we'll be starting here later this month uh, to, to begin our analysis. Any board member reports? Yes. Board uh, member Holt? Given, uh, given the, uh, the way the drought is uh, continuing and uh, letters to the editor I see in the paper and comments I've received uh, concerning new construction, uh, I would like to uh, at some future date, have the board consider uh, that uh, new construction be offset or partially offset by uh, making water reducing, uh, consumption reducing uh, facilities, uh, improvements in uh, nearby structures, nearby uh, neighborhoods, that sort of thing. I'd like to uh, ask the board to consider that at some future meeting. I think that's something we can at least direct staff to look into and, and uh, in con consultation with the director we can figure out what to handle, how to handle that. Okay. Um, I would just like to thank the board and it's in particular Vice Chair Cowan for uh, covering for me while I was gone last month. I, I knew we were in good hands and I appreciate all the hard work everybody did while I was gone. So, Director's report. Uh, thank you. Just uh, to clarify, we, we do have some conflicting meetings coming up. So the June 30th contract subcommittee meeting that Board Member Holt referred to may be moved. Uh, we're looking at a potential new date because it does conflict with the budget subcommittee meeting that's happening at the same time. And unfortunately, staff has to be in both places at the same time. So we're, we're working through that. We'll be in contact with you on that, that date. Um, just wanted to give an update on last night, the budget was passed, the 2015-2016 city budget. That included our Santa Rosa water budget as well. Uh, I want to thank our staff for all the work they did to get to that point, uh, Linda Reeds especially, for pulling everything together and uh, getting our um, presentation ready for the council, which was real well received. With that said, we had a few minutes to celebrate, and now we're back on to the budget subcommittee meeting for to discuss rates. So we're right back at it. So thank you for all your work getting us getting the budget approved, um, and looking forward to the next few months to discuss rates. One of the other things that's going on right now, just to, as a heads up, uh, the we're in the second year of supporting the Mike Hauser Algebra Academy, and this is a program that we partner with the Chamber of Commerce, and we're we. We are a host site, which basically means that we host a, a group of kids. Uh, th it's three weeks long, so a different group each week. And these are uh, students that apply for this program. It's, I think it's typically um, in, uh, English as second language um, students that apply for this program. And the goal is to get them ready for high school uh, with increasing their math, math skills and math, math abilities. The, other businesses that are involved in this uh, were, were involved, but there are other businesses such as Medtronic, um, uh, Keysight, JDSU, and some other large companies in town that are also part of this program, so we're in, in, in good company. And what the program does is it's a, one, a week long, and the students come in and they use our room here, actually two rooms over, and they learn, uh, they have a teacher, they learn do math, math exercises, learn how to, um, um, go, it increases over the weeks. And we have people come in each day for about 30, to 30 minutes to 60 minutes to give an example of how we use math in our jobs. So we have different employees come in from different areas of our organization uh, to talk about water quality, uh, stormwater treatment, uh, wastewater treatment, uh, water quality, um, I'm trying, water conservation, you know, um, operations. So we have each group come in each day and talk, expose the kids to what we do for a living, but also how math is an integral part of our operation. So it's been very successful, um, and every week, each class sends us a photo uh, with their signatures. So this is the first week's class, and we get one of these each week, which is great. And each kid writes us a letter about what they learned, what it meant to them, and what they thought their, their favorite part was, and it's pretty inspiring to read through these letters. So if you're ever interested, we'll have about 80 of these here pretty shortly, that if you, if you want to sit through them. 
But it's a great program. We're, pr we're proud to sponsor it. And thanks to staff for stepping up and spending the time to do it. I think it's a great thing to give back to. Chairman Galvin, I, could I make a comment? You may. First of all, having had a very tough algebra teacher when I was in high school, I was thinking as you were making that presentation, Director Duan, that one of the students in the class that I was in raised her hand and asked for the, the teacher to call upon her. And she, she says, what do you, what's your question? And she says, well, I don't have a question. I just want you to know that I've been working the last two or three weeks and I've found out the value of X. <laughs> Miss Wasine, the teacher, said she would look, talk to her after class. <laughs> At any rate, uh, before you adjourn, uh, Chairman, I would uh, ask if you would consider having a moment of science, si silence uh, in condolence to the Jake Auer family for his term as uh, council member and vice mayor for a period of time. Uh, and possibly the utility department uh, from the BPU could uh, and BPU could send a letter of condolences to his family. I think that's totally appropriate. And with that, we'll adjourn the meeting of the Board of Public Utilities in honor of the memory of Jake Hours. <laughs>